Alright guys, so welcome back to an episode of Jive's Fishing. So, previously we did a video on the common guide to fishers found in Singapore's waters. Yep, so today will be our part 2 and we will cover some more of the fishers that you can find in our waters. And now it's somewhere in the middle of the Okay, slightly more than halfway through the circuit breaker. So, just want to hope you guys stay healthy, stay safe. Okay, there is a little bit more left. Yeah, it's been quite, it's been quite painful. Okay, okay, by the way, the time now is about 3 a.m. So, yeah, we are still quite busy. And we will try to film more videos so that you guys have uh, stuff to watch. Uh. But... Yeah, we are still busy, we still have things to do. So I apologize if we don't get uh, enough filming done that quickly. La. We might try to put in, like, dig up some of our old footage so that you guys at least have something to watch while we film uh, new stuff. Yep, yeah. so anyway, today will be the part 2 of the common features in Singapore. So let's just get to it. The first species that I want to go into is the Guhut or the Longhead Grunt or Longhead Grunter. Okay, Pomadesus, Pomadasis auritus. Yeah, Pomadasis auritus. Okay, so it's a grunter because when you take them out of water, they will grunt. They will make this eh, eh, eh sound. Yeah, so that's why they call it a grunter. And the main characteristic of this uh, long head grunt is that the operculum or the gill covering actually is uh, elongated. Yeah, so you see like normally fish right, they are head, then they have the gill covering, it's usually like straight. But for the long headed long head grunt, it's actually elongated behind. Yeah, and they usually have a yellowish color around their fins. So this species can grow pretty big up to a few kilos yeah although in singapore usually you see them not so big okay they are not that fussy so they will feed on prawn sotong your usual stuff lah. okay i don't think they take big fish or seldom okay this fish is extremely difficult to scale okay yeah trust me i try before and the scales are actually very big and very thick and each scale is buried deep into the skin. Yeah, so this fish is very difficult to scale. If you catch one, I suggest you skin it. Yeah, instead of scaling it. Because it's a very troublesome and a huge waste of time. Okay, so take size for this fish should be around 25 cm each. Okay, conservation status is not evaluated. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay, so that's for the long head grunt or guhut. Okay, as we locals call it. So the next fish that I'm going to talk about is the spotted sickle fish. Okay. Chinese we call chao si. Sometimes in uh, Malaysia, you will hear them being called Subaru. Yeah, so they're all talking about the same fish. Okay. The Dripane Pankata. Okay. So it's a diamond shaped fish with uh, spots, black spots on the back and a tapered down head towards the front. So it kind of looks a bit weird. Okay, so they are honestly more active during the daytime. I haven't really heard of uh, sickle fish being caught in the nighttime, or very seldom. And they tend to feed on worms or pieces of cut prawn, sometimes live prawn. Okay, they have a very small mouth, so usually people use small hook. And their mouths can actually ex expand. So like, when they feed, they will, their mouth will actually expand out to suck in the prey. And the lining of your mouth is actually very fragile. Yeah, so if you're fishing for them, don't put your drag too tight. Okay, you will rip through the mouth. People don't really like to eat this fish. Okay, because they say that the meat has a muddy kind of flavor. Okay, honestly, we've tried to us, it tastes just like any other fish you can find. It's quite normal, okay, especially when you steam it. So the tech size should be around above 20 centimeters. 
yeah, it's not it doesn't get that big and it's not very priced. Okay. So next, okay, I will be talking about the trap fin. Okay, this fish is a very priced fish, quite expensive if you've tried to buy them in markets. Okay. This is often known as the Kurao, otherwise known as the Ngohe. Okay, but there are many species of uh, trap fin in Singapore. The most common species is actually the four-fingered trap fin or the white trap fin. Okay, the Eleutheronima tetradactyl. Okay, so you just need to know, pay attention to one part of the name, the scientific name. Okay, tetra. Tetra means four. Okay, so actually this uh, trap fin is known as the four-fingered trap fin. Okay, the finger is the the long long thing you under their chin yeah so those are called those are actually termed as uh, fingers so what these things are, are actually a uh, part of their uh, pectoral fins yeah it's a modified fin okay so it's said to help the trap fin to uh, find food in the dirt okay, it's similar to like catfish they have the barbells whiskers yeah to find food are uh, similar so this four finger trap fin has four of the fingers Trap fin are protandrous hermaphrodites, which means that they start off as male and they transition to female. Okay, but for trap fin wise, during the transition, they tend to stay as bisexual fish for a certain period of time. Yeah, which means that when they are in the midst of a sex change between male and female, you tend to find fish which are both male and female at the same time. Yeah, which is why they are called hermaphrodites. So they are both male and female. So usually this range is when they are about 25 to 40 centimeters. So the trap fins are usually hermaphrodites during that period of time. Yeah, so they feed on brawn, bait fish, worm. So they are not really fussy, but also not say very common in Singapore's waters. They have very high tolerance to salinity, which means that they are often found in deep water and also found in brackish water, sometimes even swimming up to fresh water. Yeah, so they can tolerate a huge difference in salinity. Yeah, so you can find them usually in uh, muddy, silty, sandy areas rather than reefs. You seldom get them around uh, coral reefs. Yeah, so not so often seen in our southern islands. Yeah. And the reason why this fish is so expensive or priced is that the Chinese again, they believe that uh, this fish is actually good for uh, children to eat mainly because the meat doesn't have much bones and it has a very uh, fine texture. So the Chinese belief is uh, suitable for small children to eat because it's easy to, easy to chew. Yeah. So the thick size should be around 25 to 40 centimeters. So next we'll be moving on to the tusk fish. Okay. So before I go into the tusk fish, just need to note that tusk fish are called tusk fish because they have teeth that look like a wild boar's tusk. Yeah, sharp and pointy teeth. Okay. The four most prominent ones, when they close their mouth, it usually sticks out. Yeah, that's why they're called tusk fish. So in Singapore actually locus we just call parrotfish parrotfish or angkor right but they are not they are not scientifically parrotfish parrotfish have beaks which they use to bite on coral and stuff tuskfish have teeth yeah instead of beaks yeah so that's the difference between a uh, tuskfish and a uh, parrotfish yeah but locally we use the names uh, interchangeably like we just call parrotfish parrotfish yeah but they are actually a uh, different species okay, so the first tuskfish we are going into is our old friend the orange spotted tusk fish okay, or the anchor tusk fish we call it anchor Coriodon ankorago anchor tusk fish ankorago okay. so this fish some people will call them paikia especially those uh, older generation yeah so paikia actually means a uh, gangster which is a reference to this fish uh, aggressive behavior when they feed so they are not fussy, they eat almost anything, any piece of meat you throw at them, they will eat. Okay. But they don't grow very big, so seldom above 1 kilo. And they are seldom found in deep water. 
So if you want to find them, shallow water reef areas, usually they will hold. Okay. This fish is crafty. Okay, when they take, you will know that it's a tusk fish because they are quite strong. But they will immediately run towards a structure. They are like uh, similar to groupers. Yeah, so they will run towards structure and try to wedge themselves inside. Okay, but usually for tusk fish, if you wait for a few minutes, usually they will swim out. Yeah, provided your line doesn't get cut off first. Uh. Yeah, so the orange spotted tusk fish, it has an orange spot, very obvious orange spot on the back of its, towards the uh, tail end of its body. Sometimes, this fish, when you cook it, you will realize that the bones are blue in color. Okay, I have no idea why. Yeah, I really don't know. Yeah, but sometimes you will find that it's blue in color. I've eaten fish like that, and nothing happened to me. So I don't think it's anything harmful. I think it's a natural like coloration of their bones. Yeah, maybe because of the stuff they eat. Uh. So take size for this fish is uh, 8 inches. So it's uh, not a very big fish. The orange spotted tusk fish has a cousin, much bigger cousin. Yeah, it's called the black spot tusk fish. So Chinese we call Qing Yi. Okay, overseas sometimes you will hear, like say in Australia, they call them tuskies. Yeah, so it's the same fish. It's this black spot tusk fish. Okay, Coriodon scoleni. This black spot tusk fish primarily feeds on crabs, coral. They will take prawn sometimes. So usually crustaceans, things with shells. Okay, they can grow very huge, and they are found in deep water. Okay, Singapore wise, about five six kilo. I've seen before. Okay, offshore. In local waters, like inshore waters, usually not so big. Overseas, they can go up to over ten kilos. Yeah, and they take on this very beautiful green color. That's why Chinese call them Qing Yi, green shirt. Yeah, cause they take on this very nice green color, and the black dot actually tends to fade in uh, older fish so usually older fish are just like a very nice green without the dot yeah so they tend to school around uh, coral areas and the meat is actually very nice it's quite priced and especially because this fish is also a very strong fighter yeah so it's often targeted especially in offshore charters okay so take size for this fish is about 30 to 40 centimeters okay so next we will move on to Pelagics. Okay, so of course before that we've been we've been covering mostly uh bottom fish. So now we're moving on to the pelagics. So pelagics actually refer to this uh group of fish that inhabit a different part of the water column from other fish. So they are usually either at the top water or the mid water column. Yeah. Although sometimes sometimes yes they do dive down to the bottom, but usually they are top water or mid water fish. Okay, so the pelagics are usually targeted using lures and jigs rather than using bait. Right, or sometimes using a floater and a bait fish. Yeah, but usually if you use a uh, lures and jigs, it's uh, easier to get a pelagic fish. Yeah. So the first group of pelagics we're gonna go into is the tree valleys. There are many of them and it can get a bit confusing. Okay, so just bear with me. The first tree valley we are going into is the diamond tree valley. Okay, it's called the uh, Zhao Ming, Jiu Ming, Che Min. Okay, sometimes known as the Ebei. Okay, but outside of Singapore and Malaysia, Ebei actually refers to a different species of fish called the African Pompano. Okay, it's a different species. Diamond tree valley is Electis indicus. Okay, it's different from the African Pompano. Okay, but locally, we just call it Ebec. We don't care. Yeah. So there is a local term. Yeah, which is why it gets a bit confusing because the two fish actually look very similar. Okay, so for the diamond tree valley, it's more diamond shaped than elongated. Sometimes there is a little bit of uh, yellow along the fish's uh, lower jaw. Yeah, so 
It's called diamond shape. It's called diamond shape. And the skin is very shiny, very beautiful. Okay. The dorsal fin, so the fin on top, actually has this very signature uh, tread like modifications. Yeah, so if you've seen one swimming in the water, the treads will like trail behind it. So it's very nice to watch also. Their mouths are very, very, very soft. Yeah, so go easy on this fish because it's very easy to rip the hook out once you hook them, especially if you. Uh, or you have the habit of setting the hook very hard. Yeah, go easy on the drag. Because these fish have very soft mouths. Okay. They usually caught on jigs, okay, sometimes live prawn, sometimes uh, small fish. Okay. And they are more commonly found around seawall areas, jetty areas, open water. So they tend to favor deeper water and not so much of the reef type areas. So the take size should be above uh, 25 centimeters. The next trivially is the giant trivially. Okay, we call GT. Uh, GT. GT is quite a universal, universal term. You will hear it almost uh, anywhere else in the world. Yeah, GT. Kerangs ignobilis. Okay. So it's one of the best fighting fish you can get, pound for pound. Okay. And they are known to give very, very long blistering runs very high stamina, even on heavy tackle. Okay. So this is a fish you can tighten drag and pump. It's okay. okay. It's more known for its uh, fighting power than its meat quality. Okay, the meat is said to be tough. Okay. They usually feed on other fish, sometimes prawn, sometimes even birds. Okay, there was this popular video going around of a GT actually breaching the surface top water to eat a bird. Yeah, so they usually scoop. So if you hook one, usually there will be like two or three behind following behind it. Yeah, and they can grow to very, very, very huge sizes. Yeah, over like 80 kilo plus yeah, in other countries. Uh. Not, not, not so much for us, unfortunately. Yeah, so personally, I I wouldn't eat a giant tree valley because I feel that they are a game fish. Uh. Yeah, but of course, to each his own. The next tree valley that we will be going into is the golden tree valley. Okay, this is known as the bunang locally, Natanodon speciosus. So juveniles are very very easy to identify. They are golden, golden in color, very bright yellowish golden, with stripes. Adults generally are white, but they still retain their stripes, and sometimes the fin will have this uh, yellow color outline. Yeah, so strong stamina, very good fighting fish again. They are not very picky about their food, so they will eat fish, prawn, squid, pieces of meat, any anything lah, basically. They do have teeth, and their lips are very uh, rubbery. Yeah, and adults actually have been known to nibble on bait, like small fish. And then when you pick up, thinking it's a small fish, they will suddenly make a run for it. And that's how people's line usually uh, snap. Yeah, because of this fish. So just be careful. Okay, take size should be around 30 centimeters ish Yeah. The next trivelli that I'm going to go into is the long fin trivelli. Yeah, this is another confusing one. Because locally, we term them as sagai. But the thing is that this local term uh, sagai actually refers to many different species of tree valley. Okay, the long record, the snub nose, the long fin, the bum nose tree valleys. Okay, but this particular long fin tree valley is known as the Arangoides amethyst. Okay, it's a specific uh, species. Even within the scientific community, there is argument about whether the long fin tree valley is the same species as the Bum nose tree valley. Okay, so until today it hasn't really been cleared up. Okay. There are people who say no, there are people who say they are the same, there are people who say they are not. Okay, but for now let's just take them as a separate species. Okay. They typically don't grow very big and they tend to school. So they tend to come in big schools. And they have a single thread like modification on their dorsal fin and on the anal fin. So they are good eating, 
good fighting on jigs, especially on light tackle. So they are very commonly targeted, especially offshore southern islands. Yeah, and the uh, take size should be around 20 cm each. Okay. The next fish, okay, no longer in three valleys anymore. Okay, we are moving on to the queen fish. So the queen fish, the most common name is called the talang or talang queen fish. Okay. You will hear people call them Sampokong. You will hear people call them Queenies. You will call people call them Sampokong. Okay, in Malaysia, some people call them Kiamhu, which means uh, salted fish. Okay, because uh, the quality of meat quality of this fish is not very good. So people use them to make uh, salted fish. Yeah, so the scientific name is the Scomborides comasonianus. It's a very elongated, streamlined fish, hard fighting usually very slim okay, and they are known for initial very long runs and jumping very acrobatic jumps okay, so it's a chinese belief that this fish is related to a deity so like the the black color prints on the side are actually the finger marks of the deity which is why some chinese people don't eat this fish they are out of respect for the deity they are usually more active in the daytime. They can go up to over 20 kilos. Yeah, they can go very, very big. And they don't survive well out of water. So they have to be released quickly. Yeah, which is why if you uh, seen one of our other videos where we caught the cranfish, it we actually rush for time. We, are, yeah, we were running around trying to unhook it and get it back as fast as we could. And even then the fish still took a few minutes to recover. Yeah, even though it spent less than one minute out of the water. So take size should be above 50 centimeters. Next, we are moving on to the Barracuda. Okay, some of you are requested for Barracuda. So here it is. In Singapore's waters, there are actually three main types of Barracuda. Two of them are covered together. The pig handle and the yellow tail Barracuda. Okay, usually, we call them yellow tail Barracuda, no matter what. Okay, we seldom hear the term pig handle because these two species are actually very similar Spirena flavicuda and Spirena jello. The only difference is that the pig handle barracuda can grow a lot bigger than the yellow tail barracuda. The yellow, yellow tail barracuda usually maximum maximum is like 30 cm, yeah, whereas the pig handle barracuda can actually grow a lot bigger, so maybe about 1 meter ish, yeah, and they both have yellow tails yellow fins yeah so it's difficult to tell them apart they are ferocious predators usually preying on small fish or squid and they have huge teeth they easily chewing through those uh, mono line so if you are fishing for them it is advisable to use a wire meat quality is said to be inferior so not so nice okay honestly i feel I, I like it because it's tougher than other fish but I like the firm texture yeah so uh, personal preference uh, yeah and take size should be above uh, 40 centimeters yeah so the next barracuda is the great barracuda so locally we call sokun or we call uh, hailang so hailang actually means a uh, sea wolf so wolf of the sea the reason being he has very big teeth and is very aggressive so scientific name for the great barracuda is spirena barracuda okay this one can grow to really massive proportions over two meters long and over 20 kilos yeah. so they usually school and when you hook them they tend to do acrobatic jumps yeah and usually after the initial burst they tend to turn around and come back to us you so the thing to note about great barracuda is that those that hang around the edges of reefs you need to be aware of uh, ciguatera poisoning yeah which is basically a toxin that accumulates in reef fish and when the barracuda eats the reef fish the toxin bioaccumulates inside their body yeah so you need to be aware of this for barracuda that you catch in open water or you know that there's no reef around then it should be okay la. yeah so the take size should be above 50 centimeters 
Next is the wolf herring. Okay. Saito, ikan parang, sitao. Yeah, same fish. Okay. Chirocentrus dorep. Okay, some people call them the dorep wolf herring. So they are fast but weak swimmers. Usually, you will see them jump before you see them fight. Okay. And they don't last long out of water, so they shed their skills very easily. They have very big and sharp teeth, but the teeth are not packed together, so they are like space. And they feed mainly on small fish. So they hang around in areas with a lot of big fish, or places like uh, Bolo Jetty. Yeah, it's quite a popular spot for Saito. They are good for fish porridge, okay, but they have a lot of bones. Yeah, so just be careful when eating this fish. So the next fish that we are going into is the hound needle fish. Okay, this one has been caught many times by us. We have cooked and catch and cook a lot of them. Okay. Also known as the todak, jam zui he, or jian zui yi in Chinese. Yeah. Overseas, if you watch uh, other YouTubers, maybe from Australia or something, you will hear them being called long tom or Tommy. Yeah, so basically it's this needle fish, hound needle fish. Scientific name is Tylosaurus crocodilus. Okay. They have a very sharp beak, it's also very hard, and it's crammed full of needle-like teeth. Okay, hence the name, like, needle fish. Okay, they eat small fish and small prawn. Usually, they will cruise along the top water surface. So you can see them, very obvious. Yeah, and they can grow pretty big, and they are difficult to hook because of their beak. It's very, very hard. So the hook often don't go in. Right. Because of this, uh, local anglers actually see them as a pest because they still bait and it's hard to hook them. So sometimes they are subject to cruelty because anglers don't like them and they tend to either leave them to die or break the jaw then throw them back, which is basically a death sentence for the fish. Yeah, so please refrain from doing that. Yeah. Whatever the case, it's still a fish, it's still a living thing, just let it live its life. Yeah. Okay, finally, we are going to wrap this up with the mackerel okay, or tangiri. So, there are two main types, two main species of uh, tangiri in Singapore's waters. I will cover them together. So, first one is the tangiri batang, second one is the tangiri papan. Tangiri batang is known as the Spanish mackerel. Okay. This has a different name in other parts of the world. Okay. In places like Australia, when they say Spanish mackerel, they are talking about this fish, same fish, tangiri batang. But in places like the US, when they say Spanish mackerel, they are talking about a different species, the zero mackerel. So you will see them hold up this fish that looks like a mackerel, but it has like a orange brown spots and they will call this the spanish mackerel okay yeah so that is their term for that fish but for us the tangiri batang or the spanish mackerel is actually this big long mackerel which is dark and usually have like bars along its body yeah, not spots tangiri papan is the spotted mackerel so it has black spots on its body both of them can grow to Pretty big sizes. Okay, papan I've heard can reach up to 10 plus 20 kilos. Patang, Spanish mackerel, I heard can reach up to 30 to 40 kilos, which is huge. And they are price table fair, but it's advisable for children and pregnant women to avoid eating the tangiri batang, the Spanish mac, because of mercury in its flesh. Yeah. So just take note of that. Usually mackerel when they strike is very fierce and you will hear your drag scream. They will run for about 50 to 100 meters depending on how big the fish is before doubling back. So they will turn back and they will try to find your line to bite. Which is why when you fish for mackerel usually people will use wire because they are very sharp teeth and they will have a reel that can retrieve very quickly. So when the fish is swimming back you can match the speed of the fish coming your way. Yeah, so they usually school and they hang around in open water. So they feed on bait fish. Okay. Their mouth 
are actually very weak so if you've gone fishing in maybe Rompin or Malaysia some of the boatmen will tell you that you don't have to pump your rod you just need to reel yeah this is for fear of tearing the fish mouth okay so here I have a jaw this is the lower jaw of a tangiri papan okay so it actually goes I don't know if you can see yeah like that yeah so you all can see the teeth okay, the row of uh, sharp teeth here yep and you realize that this uh lower jawbone they are actually not connected okay i didn't break them it's like this naturally okay so the thing about this fish is that these two jaw bones are actually only connected by a very thin layer of flesh which means they rip very easily and each of these uh, bones right, I'm not sure if you can see this but they are almost uh, see-through so they are made of very very light material and then you can see my fingers uh, shadow behind the bone even though it's pretty thick yeah so they are made of actually very light material different from like solid solid stepper type or grouper type bone okay these are actually very light and very very easy to break yeah, which is why when you fish for tangri usually people back down on the drag they don't put so tight drag yeah because they are afraid of tearing through the fish mouth yeah, and that's the reason why like, the jaw is made of that kind of material yeah, so take size for tangri papan and batang is usually about 40 to 45 centimeters Okay, they usually can be found in open water. Okay, not so much of uh, reefs. Alright, so that's the end of part 2. I've been talking for about half an hour. Okay. And yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Learn something or use it to pass time. That's also fine. Okay, stay safe. The cases are still rising as of the time I'm filming this. Okay, we'll try to get more videos out for you guys to enjoy. Okay, but if we can't film in time, then we will try and dig up some old footage. So at least you guys have something to watch. Yep, so anyway, stay healthy, stay safe. All the best guys. There is a bit more to go before we can go back to our normal lives, hopefully. Alright, so thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.